So that benzene video was way more popular than I thought it was going to be. And because of that, I thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about benzene because it's a little bit more commonly in things than you might think, but we've known about it for a long time. One of the early forms of chemistry was making perfumes. And one of the things we used to make perfumes was this resin called benzoin resin, which you might actually see on like some things still nowadays, because we do still use it. But some intrepid early chemist was like, yo, what happens if I heat this though? And so they heated it up and they sublimated this stuff called benzoic acid. Benzoic acid, you might also recognize because that's in other things as well. It's used as a preservative and other things, and it's not necessarily that harmful. A little while later, somebody took that benzoic acid and they cooked it with lye, essentially. And when they did this, they got out a liquid and that liquid smelled really nice. It had a really strong aromatic character. It's kind of where that kind of where that term comes from, if you remember that term from a chemistry class. But this liquid turned out to be what we know now as benzene. People started using it in things like perfumes and aftershaves and cleaning products. And eventually somebody patented a process to remove caffeine from coffee using benzene. Yeah, yeah. Because it was used so broadly in so many different industries, it started getting noticed pretty quickly how sick people were getting if they worked in these industries. And I mean like cancer sick, I mean like leukemia, I mean like bone marrow failure, I mean all kinds of like almost very specific to benzene sorts of diseases. So as time went on and we phased out the use of benzene and as many things as was reasonably possible, we still wanted to understand why it was toxic. You might recall that your DNA is this double helix ladder structure where you've got the backbones and then you've got the base pairs that kind of line up along it at various points. There's space between those base pairs. They're held together by almost like a magnetic sort of bond, like it's a hydrogen bond. It's not quite a chemical bond. Benzene is just a ring, a flat one plane ring, like a sheet of paper. And what happens with benzene is that it's small enough and flat enough to get right in between the rungs of that ladder. Just shit up and it tends to do this in the parts of your body where blood is made like bone marrow and stuff like that and literally leads to bone marrow failure now you might think after all of that we would just you know steer clear of it there are other things we can try to use right sadly no benzene is very useful outside of that you needed to make polystyrene we needed to make various other industrial chemicals plastics flavors food ingredients medicines it's necessary for a lot of these processes the problem is we got to get it out before it gets anywhere that it's intended to go. And that's a little harder than you think. And that's kind of the main reason behind the findings of that 2022 study of benzene and a large variety of consumer products. It's not necessarily that they added benzene to these products. It's just that it's really hard to get it out of things. And you really do need to get all of it out. So to this full point, if you're concerned about the presence of benzene in something, primarily products that you would use on a daily or near daily basis, and specifically ones that you would use on your body or in and around your home. So spray deodorants, dry shampoos, moisturizers, lotions, cleaning products that you particularly are fond of. Google about and see what you can find about what may or may not have been found in tests done on these products. Double check some of those things that you use on a daily basis. Not everything that says it's like, you know, clean and green and organic is all that clean, green and organic. You know what I mean? But yeah, the history of benzene is kind of interesting because it is one of those chemicals we've known about for a long time. And that's not always the case. But if there are other chemicals that you're interested in hearing a little bit of a historical note about, drop it in the comments. And if I can find enough information to do it, I got you. But if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button. And until next time, it's Chem Thug.